Okay, so hopefully you can see my slides. And uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to join you. Sorry, I can't be with you at the workshop this week, um, but other commitments have kept me here in Canada. And I'm going to talk to you about the exciting uh, Canada's first ever rover mission to a planetary body, and uh, that planetary body is the Moon. Um, I don't want to spend introducing everybody on this title slide because it is a big, uh, actually multinational team. Um, but I'd like to acknowledge my uh, the deputy PIs for this mission, Dr. Ed Cludis and Mer Dr. Miriam Lamellen, uh, the Canadensis team, led by Perry Edmondson. They're the prime contractor. They won the contract from the Canadian Space Agency to uh, to lead this mission. You'll then see some names from the Canadian Space Agency that we've been working very closely together with and uh, various instrument PIs, and I'll talk about the instruments uh, later on. So as Artemis 1 was uh, floating up there in space, uh, that was, as if that wasn't exciting enough, um, here in Canada, uh, we had the announcement um, that, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, Canada will be uh, sending its first ever rover to another planetary body. So we've had some experience here as a nation in the past contributing instruments uh, to other missions, such as uh, Opportunity and Spirit uh, going to Mars, but this will be the first ever Canadian-led rover mission. Uh, the plan, as you can see there, the earliest launch date we're looking at is late 2026. This will fly on a to-be-announced uh, Eclipse mission, uh, so we'll, you know, we're about three uh, to four years out. This is um, a prototype uh, of the rover mission, and so this is a, a micro rover. The overall uh, mass of this uh, mission of the rover is 30 kilograms. Uh, that includes the science payload. So you're looking at something, you know, sort of half a meter long, a little under that high, and uh, about the same wide. Um, it is solar panel, panel powered, and uh, you can see that um, you know most of the free, surf, free and available surfaces of this uh, robotic platform built by Canadensis are covered in solar panels. So we have three primary uh, science objectives driving this uh, mission. Um, the first one is essentially sort of independent of uh, volatiles and PSRs. And uh, the first one is to investigate the geological record of the moon. And the second one is to investigate surface modification processes. That PGGP1 and 06 actually maps onto what is our Canadian equivalent of the decayed survey, uh, which is this topical team reports that you see on the right-hand side there. So that's the first and the sixth highest ranked uh, um, science objectives of the Canadian geological community, um, and uh, those are the, the primary focus uh, here. Um, we're going to the South Polar region. That was actually, um, you know, part of the package of applying to, uh, you know, to put in a bid for this mission. And so, quite clearly, uh, lunar volatiles, understanding uh, polar shadows and cold traps, is a big priority for this mission too. And you'll see that reflected in the science instruments that I'll talk about in a second. Um, and uh, with the second and third highest ranked um, science objectives in this uh, Canadian Decadal Survey was to investigate the resource potential of planetary objects and the origin and distribution of volatiles. The third one is actually a kind of feed forward for uh, astronauts and uh, astronaut health. And um, we'll, we're, we aim to do some uh, scientific studies looking at uh, radiation, uh, in particular, and doing some radiation measurements on the lunar surface. So I won't uh, expect you, uh, nor will I read all of these uh, science objectives, but you'll see them broken down into that kind of three main categories, lunar polar geology, mineral resources, lunar polar shadow, cold traps and volatiles, and environmental monitoring for astronaut health. And so, you know, we're going to be looking at diversity of the lunar crust and mantle, looking hopefully for volcanic rocks and pactites, of course, uh, given the, uh, the South Pole region, uh, looking at uh, regolith processes. Then we get into a series of objectives based on um, understanding polar shadow, cold traps and volatiles. And it's not just about you know trying to identify volatiles in situ, it's about understanding that the thermal environment. And then the last one, environmental monitoring for astronaut health. So this is the uh, the science instrument. You kind of have a, a CAD drawing there on the left with the, the six science instruments highlighted. And I'll just kind of go through them uh, briefly. So the, the first one, 
um, is a neutron spectrometer. It's actually one instrument. You'll see it in two columns there, but it is a combined uh, neutron and gamma ray spectrometer. And uh, the goal is to investigate and measure hydrogen as a proxy for H2O. We then have um, two multispectral images uh, in this drawing. Uh, one of them is labeled the close-up MSI, and that is downward facing for regolith studies. And the other one is mounted higher up and pointed forward, and that's the main uh, geology instruments. So we're looking at something between six to eight bands. Um, and, uh, you know, we're fine tuning that to be able to identify the major rock forming minerals that we think we might uh, identify. Uh, the Lyman Alpha instrument is the other part of this uh, so-called frost suite, and that's uh, going to measure lunar surface reflectance at uh, 121.9 nanometers. So that's uh, tuned to looking at volatiles. We have uh, a radiation detector, and then the, uh, the big uh, scientific payload is the forge. Uh, which is a thermal imager being provided by APL. And so we have five Canadian instruments and part of this agreement with NASA to have us ride on Eclipse mission was um, half the scientific mass uh, go to the US and uh, LaForge instrument from APL, I'm sure there's some of the folks there, then Greenhagen, and Josh Cahill uh, in the room who can talk, answer more questions about that instrument. So where are we going? Um, this is the region of interest, uh, not surprisingly. Uh, I think it's probably very familiar to many people in the room because it's also really a pretty much the Artemis zone of interest. This, of course, is um, of interest for geology. It lies on the rim of the site South Pole Aitken Basin, so we hope to you know, see a lot of interesting rocks that are being excavated both by that basin and uh, many other overlapping basins. And uh, this nice image from uh, Bikil et al. in Nature uh, shows you, um, and, you have to, and I know it was discussed in the previous session, uh, we, we hope, probably not the big ones, but some of these micro scale uh, permanently shadowed regions uh, we hope to be able to identify. And uh, this is just a slide uh, showing the, the location of our working zone of interest with respect to the South Pole Aitken outline. <clears throat> so I think this is one of my penultimate slides. Um, so we've been doing um, a lot of landing site characterization uh, over the past uh, six months. We had a big meeting at the Lunar Planetary Science Conference in March. And then kind of ever since then, we've been honing down. And uh, just in the past month or so, we have down selected to, uh, you know, five or six priority sites that I think, you know, our entire uh, science team will be happy to land. I, I can't disclose where they are um, because there's a lot of discussions going on with um, NASA right now about, uh, you know, choosing the site for this uh, Eclipse mission. But you can see the, um, the purple squares on here are the 13 candidate Artemis sites. One more minute. And if you can... If it's showing up well on your screen, uh, you'll see a bunch of numbers. Uh, the numbers go over 50, but there's actually uh, 40 sites there. So a big cluster around the Relay, uh, a big cluster around Faustini, uh, Shoemaker, Shackleton region, um, and then a few kind of outliers off to the left-hand side of the screen. And I hope for the next time I talk and see many of you, we'll actually know uh, exactly where we're going on this exciting mission. And with that, um, I will leave it and uh, take any questions in the remaining time. Or perhaps those are at the end. Hi, Oz. Thanks for that talk. Um, I think we might have one time for one question right now. Okay. Well, think of your questions. We're going to have discussion at the end, like all the other sessions. <clears throat> 